Okay, um, this is unit 19, and this is the inflection of a defective verb. And what's defective about it is that it only has perfective aspect forms. There is no imperfective or aorist aspects of this verb. It's the verb oida, which means no. Okay, it's um, um, related. The form is uh, of the root is actually the same originally <coughs> as the verb verbal root C, and it goes back to Indo-European. There was one root that meant both no and C, and they became lexically different in Greek. So there's no overlap between forms that mean one and forms that mean the other. They're lexically distinct. <coughs> um, the ori Originally this word began with a W, so it was voida. So the, the uh, Latin cognate of it is video and the English cognate of it is wit and wisdom. So you can say video in Latin means something I see, whereas wit and wisdom is knowledge. You can see you have this split in the cognates between things about knowledge and things about sight. Anyhow, without going off the deep end philosophically about relationships between seeing and knowing, we want to look at these forms. This is a very common verb, um, the most common verb to know in Greek, and it's weird um, because it's so old in its behavior. So let's look at the present. It's formally a perfect, okay? Um, and that's why the endings are so weird. Um, so it, the, fir the first person singular of the present perfect, it really is that, is oi oida, means I know. It doesn't have a perfective meaning anymore. It just means no. Um, so that's oida. The alpha is only, that's one of the things that gives it away as a perfective form, right? It displays the second person singular um, active ending, stha, that we've seen before. Where else did we see it? We saw it in... Like, um, Amy, Fabry, or Amy... Yeah, and Fabry, exactly. Mm -hmm. Those are the other places. In the in the imperfect of Amy, we have A is the, and then um, in the other form, poems of... Whoops. Sorry for that, about that. In, in other forms of um, what I was what I was saying about a the, the st ending. Now okay. it's an active ending. That's the thing that's weird. It looks like st, and some people associate it with middle and second person plural. It's active mm -hmm. and second person singular, and then third person singular is oiden or oide with a new movable. Okay, so oida oista oide. It's the root. The root there is oid or originally void. In the plural, we've got ismen ista isase. Okay. Um, the root here is, looks like is, but it's actually originally is, id, okay? And the phonology changes from idmen to iste, id, ismen, for, in this dialect especially. So you're going to see that's the, the form of the root without the o or e, okay? Um, you've got o in the singular and no vowel in the plural of the present perfect. Um, when, if you look at the infinitive and the participle, the root is aid, E-I-D, originally weighed. Okay, so there's your E grade, aid, oid, and id. So the, it, the infinitive is aidenai, to know, and the participle, which is a very common form of this verb. The indicatives are, are very common, and so are the participles and the infinitives. Aidos, aiduia, aidos, has the form of a perfect participle, right? Uh, edatos, eduias, edatos, those are the suffixes associated with perfect participles. It's, it's a very common uh, word, and it's also common as an attributor of participle. So in Greek you speak of hoi edates, those who know, or ha edos, the person in the know. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a category in Greek poetry. Uh, the people who have been clued in, so who understand the, the coded message is basically what you're talking about. Um, imperative uses the id root, which has become s. Uh, so is the and isto in the singular no, and let her or him know. Is there y'all know, and isto let them know. Um, we now want to look at rarer forms, but it's good to be able to recognize them of this word. There's the subjunctive and the optative, which are based on the e i d, the e grade of the stem, right? Um, so you have a do, a de, se, de, a do, men, a de, te, do, se, not confusable with any other Greek verb form. Mm -hmm. And then the optative, a de, a de, a de, a se, de, a de, men, a de, te, a de. And you may re remember that the aorist, the second aorist of the verb to see is a don, okay? A don means I saw, but you're never going to see a form of that, that verb that looks like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there, 
there, what's, that's what I mean when I said they're lexically distinct. There's no form that either belongs to oida, that belongs to both oida, the verb to know, and uh, adon, the verb to see. They're not confusable. So <clears throat> there, um, the the weirdest of all the forms is the pluperfect form, which is just the imperfect, if you will. I used to know, or I was knowing. Um, and there you uh, augment the ei form of the stem, so you get an eta with an iota subscript to get the past tense. And then it has some strange athematic endings, a day, a day, sta, a day with an ei. And then the delta becomes a sigma again, a spin, a sta, a san. Um, that a san can't be confused with the third person plural of the imperfect of the verb to be because it has a iota subscript. Okay? So, so. The key thing is to remember the three forms of the stem, oid, aid, and id, okay? Um, and then here you've got the augmented form of the aid stem with an iota, uh, uh, an aid and an iota subscript. All right?